Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, we will review the Rollei 35, which is a beautiful miniature viewfinder camera that was first introduced at Photokina in 1966. The camera is famous for its very small size, its light weight and quiet shutter, and all that make it ideal as a companion for street photography. In the course of 30 years, the camera was sold about 2 million times and came in all sorts of different versions. So it is important to point out that today we will focus on the Rollei 35S, which comes with a 40 millimeter f2.8 um, cult size sonar lens. In order to review it properly, my friend Greg and I went out on a little photo walk uh, in Würzburg, shooting a roll of um, Fuji Pro 400H rated at ISO 200 because it's the kind of film that likes to get a lot of light. In our case, unfortunately, it uh, got too much light. <laughs> and uh, the reason for that is that uh, we produced uh, some light leaks, unfortunately, that were not intended at all. And um, so let, let me try to explain what happened. When I um, had shot the 36th um, frame, um, I happened to it once one more time. And when rewinding the film, we realized, okay, something is wrong. This is going way too easy. And uh, that kind of sparked our interest and we wanted to, to look up what happened. Uh, so um, Greg removed his sports coat and put it on top of the camera, trying to cover up the camera as much as possible. And then in the dark or supposed dark, uh, kind of feeling what happened to the film. And then he realized, okay, that apparently I had ripped out the film of, out of its container, not just because of me and my, my force, but apparently there was also a problem with this particular film. So we ended up having the film kind of in the camera um, and, and ripped out of its um, container. And in that moment of just feeling that uh, underneath the sports coat, we apparently produced the light leak because afterwards we immediately closed the camera and went back to, Craig, to Greg's place and in the dark room removed the film and put it into a container and all that. But the, the end result was that uh, a large portion of the film um, was covered with a light leak and even in the early frames, the early half of the film that mostly Greg shot, um, we do see some small light leaks um, um, around one edge of the film most of the time. So if you see the photos, don't be confused about that. It's just uh, the product of our light leak and I'm really sorry about that. And the fact that the film remained inside the camera is also the reason why we couldn't <laughs> kind of um, shoot another black and white roll, which we originally intended. We wanted to shoot a, an Ilford FP4 roll. Um, so sorry about that here. Um, we hope you get a good idea of the film and the camera anyways. So without further ado, let's dive in and take a look at some of the photographs and talk more about this camera, the beautiful Rollei 35S. The Rollei 35S comes with a built-in center the needle light meter that is very accurate and a joy to use. The camera does not feature any range finder, so all you can do is guess the distance to your subject and then set the lens or the focusing ring on the lens accordingly. And that kind of makes the camera prone to zone focusing. So what many street photographers are used to basically closing down your aperture to f8, f11, or even f16, and then only controlling your exposure through the shutter speed. And that's what, also, what we also did um, on our slightly overcast, a little bit sunny day. Um, as mentioned before, we were shooting an ISO 400 film rated at ISO 200, and mostly um, shot at f11 as an aperture and with a shutter speed of um, mostly one 125th of a second. Um, in general, the camera supports shutter speeds ranging from half a second up to um, 1 500 of a second plus a bulb mode. And in terms of the ISO settings, um, you can set it to either 
to everything between um, ISO 25 to ISO 1600, so a pretty wide range. Um, the only people who might feel excluded are people who enjoy shooting um, film at ISO um, 3200. So, um, for instance, Ilford HP5 or Kodak Tri-X push to 3200 as a street photographer. Some people do that. Um, that's something that the light meter won't support, um, but everything else is perfectly fine. Um, interestingly, the camera, when it was first introduced, um, it was the smallest 135 film camera on the market. And even today, um, there are only two sm smaller cameras, which are the Minolta TC1 and the Minox um, 35. So this is also very interesting because the camera was literally designed around the 35 millimeter frame. <music> is famous for its iconic design and smart solutions. For instance, the film advance is located on the left of the top plate, which requires some getting used to but makes perfect sense to keep the small form factor. So in effect, you're advancing the film in the opposite direction from an SLR, from a traditional one. In addition to that, the film counter, the film rewind and even the hot shoe are located on the bottom of the camera. Again, a very interesting feature. Um, the shutter speed and the aperture settings are located next to the lens, so similar to a traditional twin lens reflex camera like a Rolleiflex. And that in effect um, keeps the top plate very clean and focused on the essentials only. In practice when you're shooting the camera it always makes sense to do your settings first. So to basically look at what you, what you want to take a photograph of, um, then direct the camera a little bit to the floor, do the settings, uh, correct uh, um, your exposure using the light meter. And once you've had all your settings and also adjusted the, the focus, so the correct distance, then to put it up at your eye and take the shot. And I basically adapted this kind of behavior or observed this behavior when Greg used the camera and then tried to adopt it myself and quickly got used to that um, way of shooting. I only forgot um, to focus correctly like one or two times because of course I'm used to focusing once I have the camera up at my eye level, which you do with both a rangefinder and an SLR. So that was the main difference. Everything else and even uh, getting used to setting aperture and shutter speed next to the lens was, was very, very easy and um, a lot of fun. So what are the pros and cons of this camera? On the pro side, there's the beautiful design, the small size, the quiet shutter, and the bias towards zone focusing, shooting if you're into street photography and like that. Um, it comes with a bright viewfinder, um, lightweight, and an extremely sharp card size quality lens. Um, furthermore, it's great that it comes with a built-in light meter and that it is a reliable, completely mechanical um, camera that is not really prone to breaking down on you. On the 
con side, we have to mention that, of course, it does not feature a rangefinder or any kind of distance meter. It does have an unconventional film advance, which, as mentioned, is kind of easy to get used to. And um, it does have a potentially problematic hot shoe placement at the bottom um, of the camera. So there are some use cases where this is a little bit problematic, potentially. In terms of the settings, I read online a lot of people find the aperture and shutter speed settings fiddly. I personally didn't find that. And um, once you get used to it, it's very easy and it makes a lot of sense. The only thing that is actually fiddly is the ISO setting. <laughs> and since you only do that once in the very beginning, usually um, when you put your film in there, it's okay, but it's important to point that out. Most importantly, as it comes with a built-in light meter, um, it also comes with a battery. And here it is important to mention that um, the, the camera was designed for the original PX635 um, batteries that are not available anymore. But thankfully there are adapters and our camera also used such an adapter for the LR44 batteries um, that are more conventional and that can still be purchased today. Um, so it's basically ensuring that you can use the modern batteries with the old ones. And in our case, the light meter worked perfectly fine and I can highly recommend taking a look at that as well. When researching the camera, I came across a very interesting story that I have to tell you, and it's about the industrial designer Heinz Waske behind this beautiful camera, who um, understood at the time that there was a market for um, not just the half frame miniature cameras, but also for very small full frame 35 millimeter film cameras. And what he did is um, design such a camera, the Roli, um, which, which became the Rolei 35 in his living room and he used the prototyping um, workshop of his um, employer at the time, Virgen Musterbau, <laughs> um, to produce a first prototype of this camera. And only when he presented the first prototype um, of uh, this camera, a fully working prototype to his um, boss at the time, Heinrich Virgen, um, he was told, what are you doing and why are you using my workshop capabilities and prototyping capabilities for your more or less private project? And only that, at that moment in time, he learned that his um, current employer wanted to leave the camera manufacturing business. And um, of course, that meant for him, he was looking for new employment and also wanted to, of course, get that prototype out there and get it to the market. And he approached Kodak and he also approached Ludwig Leitz at the time, but was to turned down by both of them. And eventually in 1965, ended up working at Rolleye in Braunschweig. And then another element of chance came into play when the new managing director, who had only started in March of 1965, accidentally came across the prototype and, Heinrich, and Heinz Waske, and um, immediately saw the potential of this camera and decided that it should be manufactured by Rolleye. And that was actually a good thing for the camera because it would mean that it would be produced with um, components coming from manufacturers that were already partnering with Rolleye. So in effect, it meant uh, that it would come with a better lens, a uh, Carl Zeiss Tessa lens. It would come with a um, state-of-the-art Gossen um, CDS uh, metering system or exposure meter and a precision-made diaphragm shutter made by Compur. So all the great German engineering and lens design came into play um, for the first Rolleye 35 
camera. And I found that story very interesting and this element of chance and also the perseverance of Heinz Waske of bringing his dream and vision um, onto the market and creating this beautiful miniature camera. When I first came across the Rolei 35 um, series and looked at the market, I noticed that there are huge price differences. And getting closer into it, I realized, okay, it's connected to the Rolei 35T coming with a Tessar lens that only has a, an f3.5 aperture and the Rolei 35S that comes with the f2.8 um, sonar lens. And apparently there are also differences between the made in Singapore version and the made in Germany version, at least for collectors, this appeared to be an important part. And once I used the camera now and used Greg's camera and realized that the camera does not really have a distant meter and it is, it makes a lot of sense shooting it zone focusing, <laughs> I realized that the widest aperture, the largest aperture is not really that important. And also digging a little bit deeper into the differences between the made in Germany, um, which were the early versions only shortly produced, and then the made in Singapore versions, I also realized that um, it's not such a big deal. So one of the main differences is that the top plate of the Singapore version is made of aluminum, while the German versions, for instance, are made out of brass. Um, and uh, some additional details here and there. But I personally would recommend if you're interested in using such a small camera and using it for um, zone focusing street photography, then just go for the much cheaper Rolei 35T version, um, even a made in Singapore version, it doesn't matter at all. It's just a beautiful tiny little camera and you can save a lot of money um, going for that. And it's still a an extremely sharp card size lens and there if you look it up there are even some comparisons some direct comparisons online of the two um, versions and the two lenses built into them just as a buying recommendation you don't have to spend a lot of money on the Rolei 35 in my opinion So to sum it up, both Greg and I really enjoyed shooting this camera and would highly recommend buying it, especially if you're into discrete street photography, if that is your thing. As mentioned before, I personally wouldn't look for the Sonar version made in Germany. Um, a Tessa made in Singapore perfectly does the trick. And yeah, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. And also please leave us a comment in the comment section below. We're really looking forward to your thoughts and ideas and feedback. And please don't grill us for, um, for the light leaks on this particular film. We are perfectly aware of our mistake and our key learning was to bring a changing back to important shoots in the future. Thanks for watching. Um, we hope to see you soon. Bye.